Georgia Southern Football 98. Brought to you in part by Coca-Cola. Always Coca-Cola. Rozier Ford Lincoln Mercury in Statesboro. The dealership that does business the right way. Bullock Memorial Hospital. The new vision for healthcare in Southeast Georgia. Bubba Burgers. You'll never bite a better burger than a Bubba Burger. And Sea Island Bank. The better way to bank. everybody welcome to and uh, I'm sure they're gonna be excited to play today Georgia Southern officially ranked number one in the polls this week after defeating Appalachia State a great game last week the team was really up for it how the team respond this week in practice well I felt like we had an okay week of practice it wasn't great but it really wasn't bad and uh, you know we'll find out today hopefully we're focused we certainly have a lot to play for and and you, we really haven't accomplished a great deal yet, and I think our young men know that, and hopefully we'll come out and play well today. What do the Bulldogs throw at us today? Well, they're uh, an offense that, uh, you know, runs some option and tries to mix it up, and uh, the last couple of games they've uh, been able to move the ball better than early in the year, and defensively they've played fairly well all year. They'll base out of a 4-3 and, uh, you know, really sound, really aggressive, and play good hard in those defense. Should be a great game today up here. The weather is gorgeous up here in Charleston for this game. Stay tuned. We'll have a look at the first half highlights coming up in a minute, but first, the Coca-Cola play of the day. Everybody. Welcome back to Georgia Southern Football 98. The Eagles on the road in the Southern Conference to take on the Citadel Bulldogs in Charleston. A beautiful day for football. Georgia Southern loses a toss. The Citadel the first at the second half. So, Coach, we get the ball first to start the game. Right. Uh, we got the ball first. Uh, came out with pretty good field position. We tried to run a little counter play uh, to start with. Didn't get much, and uh, for uh, one of the few times all year, we were three and out, had to punt the football. Georgia Southern has to punt the football, so Citadel gets the ball, and they are able to move the ball. They mixed up some runs, some passes. Quarterback played very well for the Citadel today, and then where they're down 31, about to score a touchdown. Third and goal from the one. They roll to one side, reverse, throw it back to the tight end for the touchdown. Right, uh, got him wide open. It's a play they had run before this year, and uh, tough play to defend. Them. We got crossed up in the secondary and, and basically turned the guy loose. Citadel jumps out to a 7 0 lead on Georgia Southern at this point, but the Eagles get the ball back. We're able to get the ball moving thanks to a good kickoff return by Corey Joyner. We get in good position and our offense moves the ball down the field. Right, we were able to answer the, the call and uh, drive it down and score and, and tie the game up 7 0. Greg Hill did a good job keeping the ball today in the first half. He had some big yardage for you. I thought Greg played well. He played, he, he played really good, better as the game went along. Uh, early on, I think, uh, you know, we got a little frustrated and, and didn't play the way he's capable of playing early. Mm -hmm. But uh, as the game went along, Greg did a great job. With the extra point, it's 7-7, seven to seven, and we are all tied up in the first quarter. And that's how it's going to end in the first quarter. To start the second quarter, Citadel is driving, but they're forced to punt. Georgia Southern, we come right back. Their defense was able to force us out again. Right, well, they punted us out on about the two-yard line or five-yard line somewhere. And, on first down, we had a couple guys wide open on play action and missed them. Uh, and then we don't get out and get sacked on the on the next play where we try it again. And, uh, you know, had to punt and gave them a short field and excellent field position. The Citadel was able to use that and move on down the field. They got down close to the goal once again and another pass to the tight end, this time a little quick one for the touchdown. Right. Uh, looked like we had it fairly well covered. He, he stuck it in there nice. and. Uh, Guy shielded our safety with his body and made a nice play for me. But the Citadel failed to uh, get the extra points, so the score at this point is 13 to 7, Georgia Southern. You still feel good about the way Georgia Southern has been moving the ball. We get the ball, but we fumble the ball away quickly. Right, disappointing. Uh, you know, we drop the ball, fumble it, and, and get them right back out on the field. And you know, they were doing a nice job in the first half possessing the football. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, when you go out offensively and you fumble it right away. Uh, you know, you take away any chance you have to score and put them back with a short field again. They're able to get the ball and mix up again. They had good play calling, it seemed, in the first half where they were really able to catch off uh, some big plays on us. Right, well, they were able to run and throw both uh, and, uh, and and do it uh, very well. They executed very nicely, uh, had some big plays on the option, and, 
and then they were able to hit some pass plays on third down when they had to. Sudero gets down close once again. This time they are going to run the ball in. That's going to make it 20 to 7 after the extra point, and that's how the first half is going to end. At this point, it doesn't look real promising for the Eagles. No, but, uh, you know, we still had 20 minutes left to play or 30 minutes left to play, and, uh, you know, the game's never over till it's over, and, uh, I, I knew we could play better than we played in the first half. Georgia Southern was not playing up to what you might expect of them, but we still had a game, a half a game to play. We'll see how they respond coming out of halftime. Right now, we're going to take a break, but when we come back, we'll have the second half highlights and also right now, up close and personal look at our defensive coordinator, Rusty Russell. Even though Rusty Russell grew up in a coaching family, Rusty tried to avoid it. I was reluctant to say the least. As a matter of fact, I actually did not do it for a couple of years. I was in sales and then went back uh, to Georgia as a graduate assistant football coach. And the rest and a lot of miles traveled is all history. Now Russell loves coaching, although the profession creates a lot of sleepless nights. They spend a lot of time, as do most coaches, chasing ghosts. What if this happens and what if that happens? And uh, I don't know. I imagine Freud would have a heyday with some of my, my dreams. Talk about mind games. Russell was a defensive coordinator for one year in the Canadian Football League. It really is a tremendous laboratory to learn defense because your margin for error is uh, shaved down so much. During his stint in the CFL, Russell had to try and defend quarterbacks Doug Flutie and Tracy Hamm. Flutie th threw better uh, while backpedaling than anyone I've ever seen before, after, or since. And Tracy just ran our defensive lineman to death so that at the half, we were totally wasted. Regardless of how good the game plan was, Tracy burned the game plan up by running our defensive line around. Russell has run around a lot, so to speak, in the coaching business, and he certainly appreciates the support from his family. One of the marks of a good football coach needs to be his ability to marry over his head and probably better than anything in my life, I did that. And I've had a wife who's been very wonderful at helping uh, my children adjust to new circumstances. Right now, Russell and his family are enjoying life in the borough. I love uh, being around this campus and running around this campus because it, uh, it just reminds me of what a college campus ought to be. My family loves Statesboro. We've enjoyed living here an awful lot. And uh, it has really been a great move for us. I think we showed our maturity the second half. We we're, we're a championship caliber team, but we didn't play it. We didn't play very well first half. And the second half, we you know we talked to each other, we looked at each other in the eye, and we said, hey, we ain't played that kind of ball. In the second half, we came out and played Georgia Southern football. Yeah, this team showed a lot of character this week. I mean, they came out and we played good ball. We didn't play pretty good the second half, but that shows the character of our team to come out and score 44 points, and the defense come out and shut them down. I don't think it was anything they were doing, but it just we weren't we weren't making plays and. That's a big part of this game, and when we started making plays, things started going our way a little. Well, it lets us know we can't come out flat and expect to win the ball game. Uh, we have to come out hard at, at the start of the game. Welcome back to Georgia Southern football. The Eagles struggling in the first half. The Citadel playing excellent football. They are leading 20 to 7 coming out of the locker room. Coach, what'd you tell your players at the half? Well, there wasn't a whole lot to tell them. I mean, they lined up pretty much and doing the way we thought they would on defense and they were doing the things they've done all year on offense. I really felt like that we were maybe not so much flat as, as we were so tight we were playing not to lose instead of playing to win and uh, I just tried to stress before we came back out to let's go out and let it all hang out and, and, and play you know go if you see something go make a play and if, 
if you're wrong, I'll take the responsibility. But let's, I know we can play better than that, and, uh, and let's go play the way we're capable of. Well, the defense came out to play. The Citadel gets the ball to start the half, but the defense shut them down cold and forced the Bulldogs to punt. The Eagles get the ball, and we're finally able to move a little bit. Running down the field, Adrian Peterson had some good right, runs. Adrian had a nice run on the option, and uh, we got down uh, inside their 20 and uh, dropped a snap and, and really hurt us, and, and we got behind a little bit. But uh, we were able to get three points out of it. We were able to get points on the board, and I thought that was huge. With that field goal, that makes it 20 to 10. The Citadel, you still think Georgia Southern's got the potential to move the ball. The Citadel, though, comes right back down, and it looks like our defense has held them. They're forced to punt, and they throw a fake punt, and they're able to complete the rainbow pass. <laughs> really disappointing. We had our defense on the field. We were in safe punt, and uh, we had our defensive team on the field, and. Uh, you know, they just threw it straight up, and, and, and we let the guy catch it. It's very disappointing. On that, now the Citadel has a 17-point lead, 27 to 10 over Georgia Southern with 741 to go in the third. Georgia Southern gets the ball back, and this time you fly down the field with a couple of big passes to Corey Joyner. Right, we hit a play action to Corey. Greg did a nice job sticking it in, getting the ball, and to get it down to about their five-yard line. And, a couple plays later, uh, Adrian was able to take it in, and that was a, a huge answer, I thought. 27 to 17, Citadel still leading, but Georgia Southern is moving the ball. Citadel gets the ball. This time, the defense really started to play. They shut them down, forced them to punt, and you get the ball right back, and you really start to showcase your big fullback. Right, uh, we were running a little twirl option, and Greg was doing a nice job getting the ball pitched, and guys on the perimeter, uh, Sherrard Freeman got a great block for him over on our sideline, and. And uh, Adrian's a tremendous player, and you give him a, a crease, he's going to take it uh, a long way. Adrian took it in for the touchdown. At this point, Georgia Southern has narrowed the gap to three points. Still Citadel 27-24 with 19 seconds to go in the third. Citadel gets the ball back, and you're hoping, you're saying to yourself, Coach, if we can just stop them from scoring, we've got a chance. But they answer. They don't die. They move right down the field. Right. They hit a big, long play on the on the belly to the fullback. and. Uh, and got it down and was able to, to get it in the end zone and answer the score and go back up by 10. The Citadel now at 34 to 24. We're in the fourth quarter, 13 31 to go. Georgia Southern gets the ball. You just wonder how many times can the Eagles keep coming back? Well, the offense kept coming back under the direction of Greg Hill. We're able to move the ball down with some nice runs and Adrian Peterson again, some big runs and finally a 20 yard touchdown run. Right. Uh, you know, great drive. I thought that Greg did a nice job executing the offense on the way down the field and, uh, you know, we were able to. Uh, to, to push it in and get a huge score. At this point, it is 34 to 31. Citadel still leading with 10.50 to go in the fourth quarter. And we saw on special teams today when we were kicking off and when the Citadel was kicking off as well, we were every both teams were trying to short kick. Well, we were going to sky kick uh, their returner, Carlos Frank. Uh, you know, he scares you to death watching the tape. And, and we decided that he wasn't going to beat us by returning a kick. And, you know, we gave them pretty good field position. But at the same time, uh, you know, they didn't break one for a touchdown. We had one that was very disappointed. We kicked too deep, and their deep returner got it, and we didn't cover well. But, uh, you know, we went in, and we weren't going to let him uh, return kicks on us. At this point, also, you have to take your hat off to uh, your field goal kicker extra point team. He set a record today for Georgia Southern with most consecutive extra points. Well, Chris has done a great job all year. It was disappointing that we got one block today. Uh, but. Uh, you know, I think Chris probably kicked it a little low, and they got good penetration and uh, had two jumpers that got up and, and got a hand on it. Citadel still got the lead. They're going to get the ball. And at this point, the defense again, big, big plays, a couple of blocked passes. That forces them to finally punt the ball. Right. And now for the first uh, chance in a long time, we had a chance to get the lead. And, uh, you know, to our offense's credit, uh, we were able to take the ball right down the field and, and get it in the end zone for uh, our first lead of the day. On the punt return, Corey takes it up to midfield, and then you see the big play on first and 10 from the Citadel 49. Adrian Peterson just makes it look so easy, running the ball 51 yards for the touchdown. Well, great run by Adrian and a great block by Sherrard Freeman and some guys. And uh, it's like I said, if you give him a, a, a crease, he's going to take it to the house. For the first time in the game, 9.04 to go in the fourth quarter. Georgia Southern has the lead, 38-34, but you just don't know how safe it's going to be with the way Citadel would play. Well, no, the way the game was going, it was going back and forth, but, uh, you know, our defense was able to go out and put together a, a big stand and, uh, and 
get us the ball back. You move Citadel back consecutively on their next drive. They had a fourth and 25 before they finally had to punt the ball. Right, our defensive line was getting good penetration and made some great plays. And, you know, we had a chance to get great field position. Their punter hit a great punt. And then we made, uh, a, you know, not a very smart play on our punt return team with a block in the back. At this point, with about five minutes to go in the game, you've got the ball and you've got the lead. you got to think, hey, we might be able to grind out the clock here. Well, I wanted to try to score again. And on first down, we had a little play-action pass that we'd hit. And they actually did a pretty good job covering it. But, uh, you know, Greg did a nice job throwing the ball to Audrell. He made a nice catch for us and, and got us back across midfield. And, in great field position, and we were able to take it in and score. Greg took it in for the nice touchdown run to make it 44 to 30 for Georgia Southern. The Citadel gets the ball, they fumble, and again, another touchdown when the Eagles get the ball back, Adrian Peterson. Right, basically we were trying to run out the clock and just ran a zone dive uh, out of a heavy set, and Adrian uh, broke it and, you know, got it all the way down inside the two-yard line. And, on the next play was able to take it in. And that's the way the game is going to end. The Eagles win a tough one in the Citadel at the Citadel in Charleston, 51 to 34. Don't go away. We'll be back with some closing thoughts right after this. Welcome back to Georgia Southern Football 98. The Eagles big winners on the road after having to come back against a very game Citadel uh, team here today. Football is an offensive team sport. The offense played excellent in the second half, but you have to take your hat off, I think, to an individual performance throughout the season. Adrian Peterson today broke the 1AA touchdown record set by Randy Moss. He has 20 touchdowns now to break Moss's 19, and he had 230-some-odd yards. Just a great performance. Well, a great gutsy performance. I tell you what, I can't say enough about Adrian. He's uh, such a great player and a great kid, and you're just so happy for everything he does because he's so... Uh, uh, unassuming, uh, he gives everybody the credit, and uh, even though it is a team thing, you know, Adrian's certainly a gifted individual. At this point, it doesn't really get any easier. In the Southern Conference, you've got to bring the uh, the Bucks in of East Tennessee State, and they gave you all you wanted up there last oh, year. Oh, no question. Preseason, uh, they were picked second in most of the polls, and, uh, you know, they're, they're struggling a little bit now because they've had a really tough schedule, but very, very talented football team, and uh, you know, it's a big game for us next week in Statesboro. We can clinch a playoff bid with a win, and uh, hopefully we'll have a good crowd and get behind our Eagles and, uh, and come out and play well. The Eagles continue to be unbeaten. They are ranked number one in the nation. A huge win in Charleston in the Southern Conference, and it will be a great game in Statesboro next week against East Tennessee State. For Coach Paul Johnson, I'm Scott Pierce. We'll see you next week. Southern Football 98. Brought to you in part by Coca-Cola. Always Coca-Cola. Rozier Ford Lincoln Mercury in Statesboro. The dealership that does business the right way. Bullock Memorial Hospital. The new vision for health care in Southeast Georgia. Bubba Burgers. You'll never bite a better burger than a Bubba Burger. And Sea Island Bank. The better way to bank. <laughs>